everyone, this is Marina from Soul in the Raw. I'm a vegan blogger, educator, and recipe creator. And today I want to talk about a really important subject in my opinion. And that is some mistakes that people make when they're trying to make healthy vegan food taste good. And I'm not just going to talk about mistakes. I'm also going to tell you some strategies for how to fix them. So back when I started eating vegan, which was about five years ago, I had many failed miserable dishes. Just things that kind of looked like mush and did not taste good. And that did not get me excited about vegetables. And the whole point of this video today is to get you excited about eating your vegetables. Because let me tell you, I get as excited to eat my food as I get excited about restaurant food, seriously. Because it's so flavorful, it's delicious, there's nothing I don't like about it. So let's get started. The first thing is always mindset, in my opinion. So if you're a person that believes that healthy food equals bland, boring food, you gotta change that mindset, okay? Because healthy food can be so extremely beautiful, as you can see right now with all of the photos I'm showing you, and it can taste awesome. And you don't even have to be this like kitchen genius to make it taste awesome. You just have to know some strategies that I'm gonna talk about today for how to do this. And it's totally doable. And honestly, it can taste just as good as any processed food once you know these little, little tricks. So once you fix that mindset and you start believing that number one, food can taste awesome and be healthy at the same time. And number two, you totally can be the one to prepare such food. We move on to mistake number two, and that is purchasing some ingredients and produce that's not really fresh or ripe. So basically, when we're making vegan food, most of the food is made up of produce. And if it doesn't look very good, or if it's not ripe, or if it's traveled many, many miles to get to you, or if you're buying it out of season, there's just not too much you can do to fix it. So um, part of this is how you store your food. And just a little secret that I wanna share from the Effortlessly Flavorful Vegan Kitchen, which is an online course I'm teaching that you can purchase starting um, March 23rd, is that tomatoes, do not store them in the fridge. Big mistake, because then they lose all of their flavor. So when you're purchasing organic and ripe fruits and vegetables, and also uh, fresh beans and not the ones from a can, and kind of everything from scratch that is very good quality, you'll be able to make much more delicious meals. Now let's move on to possible mistake number three, and that is not using enough spices and seasonings. Spices are so important to make your food taste good. And the cool thing is that they're really, really healthy because they're full of antioxidants and they're really anti-inflammatory, many of them, such as turmeric, my favorite. And so when you know how to use spices, you know how to make flavorful food. And it's something that can take you a little bit of time to learn, but it's, it's pretty easy. So kind of a key rule is to start with about half a teaspoon for one meal per person, and then build it up from there. So you kind of taste this and you see if there's enough spice or if it needs more. And then also important is to know your cultural inspiration. So for example, if you are making a Mexican inspired dish, you'll be using some chili powder, some chipotle powder. If you're making a Thai dish, you'll be using lots of cilantro and cumin and many more. And I kind of go into more detail about all of these points and especially this one in the blog. So I'm going to link the blog post above here so make sure to check that out for all of this information and now let's move on to number four number four the fourth mistake when trying to make healthy food taste good is not using enough salt now if you know me, you know that I love my salt. And I've actually done a lot of research about this because everything I'm teaching you right now is not only delicious, but it also is very healthy. So I wanted to make sure that salt is not the devil. And guess what? Unless you have a kidney problem or high blood pressure, um, when it is actually really important to keep your salt intake pretty low, 
Salt is not a bad thing. Just make sure that you're not eating a ton of sodium. So if you are eating unprocessed and whole ingredients like what I teach, you'll be fine because processed food is one of the biggest sources of salt. And I like to add about a quarter teaspoon of salt in any of my dishes. Now another thing that you can do instead of salt is use uh, seaweeds. They're so good for us, they're full of minerals and iodine, which we need. And they are a little bit salty, but they have less sodium than just, you know, a teaspoon of salt. So I love wakame and nori and dulse. These are sea vegetables that are really delicious. And then another option, which is has to be my favorite, are fermented foods. And basically, the fermentation process of food really enhances the flavors of the salty and the sour. So even if you're using just a little bit of salt to make a fermented uh, dish, it'll still be really, really salty. And that is a really good way to decrease your sodium intake. So for example, I love to use kimchi, sauerkraut, ume plum vinegar, and miso. There are all kinds of miso. There's chickpea miso and soy miso and all these types of things. And they are delicious. And you just need a very small amount in your food. And in the Effortlessly Flavorful Vegan Kitchen, I teach you how to make uh, fermented condiments like salsa and sriracha. And you can do it yourself. It's really, really easy. So now let's move on to mistake number five, and that is making your meals way too dry. If you know me, you know my stance on oil, which is what most people use to make their meals creamy. It's not a healthy food, not at all. Not olive oil, not coconut oil. Uh, research shows that it's really, really bad for us. And again, in the blog post, I talk all about this and I give you some pieces of research to see for yourself. So what do you do if you don't use oil and you still want your food to taste good? Well, you learn how to make oil-free sauces, dips, and dressings. And this is really my specialty. It's my favorite thing to do. And I like it so much because I've actually developed the step-by-step -step method for how to make them. So if you're not liking your time in the kitchen, if you're not a cook, it doesn't matter. You can still do this. It's super easy. It's step by step. It's piece of cake. And uh, you can actually download my three favorite oil-free vegan sauces, dips, and dressings. I'll link that in the description box below. And also in the Effortlessly Flavorful Vegan Kitchen, the online course that I'm going to be opening for purchase March 23rd, I teach you all about this method. So now let's move on to the last mistake. Mistake number six, and that is cooking in a bad mood. It just really does not turn out as delicious. And I swear I have tested this on myself. Whenever I'm in a bad mood and I'm cooking, it's just not as good. When I'm actually cooking, I really like to take a moment and appreciate all of the ingredients that I'm using, how healthy they are, how awesome they're gonna make my family and myself feel, and just, you know, the whole way that they went to get it to my house, like the farmers that grew them and the soil and the earth and the sunshine and all of these awesome things. And that makes me really, really happy. So that's it. Those are my six uh, mistakes as well as strategies to make healthy vegan food taste really, really good. And just remember the most important one is that you gotta believe that you can make it taste good and that the goodness is within it. And it's totally doable for anyone. So make sure to check out my blog post that has all the details about this. And also, if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single week and to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. I love you all. I send you big hugs and I will see you next week. Bye.